Hello Oceanside Perspective community. My name is Sarai. I'm a third year student and also a volunteer at Oceanside Perspective. Um, I'm very grateful to have this opportunity today to welcome aboard Benjamin Lyon, who is now a part of OP's board of directors. All right, so Benjamin, tell me, where are we right now? Well, we're in what's called the Iron Bird. And if you think about the history of aviation, literally the Iron Bird in old school aviation was where they laid out the mechanical components of the airplane to make sure it would all come together and fit. Of course, nowadays airplanes and aircraft are much, much more complicated, much more advanced, more electronics, computers, software, all that stuff. And actually what's incredible about this particular Iron Bird is that we can pair people, the pilots, and actually fly missions. So we actually, on the other side of the wall, we actually have the whole cockpit where the pilot can sit and fly all of the flights connected to all of the machinery and power systems and electronics, um, just like you would in a real flight. Wow, that sounds incredibly technical yeah. and incredibly hard to do, of course. So at Archer, what problem are you trying to solve here? Well, at the end of the day, we're trying to solve urban air mobility and the kind of the core product that we've been developing, and we're actually going to be um, deploying and showcasing all through the 2028 Olympics is an eVTOL product. So what does eVTOL mean? It's a, an electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. So that means it can take off like a helicopter, fly like an airplane and land like a helicopter. And that's important because helicopters can land anywhere, but airplanes can go really far because they've got a wing. And so the technology and the product can take advantages of both of those things. So I actually have a question to ask you regarding technology. What do you think the common thread is between technology and innovation? Is there like an interchangeable between them? What's your opinion on that? Well, it's interesting. Technology is like an ingredient. So think about like an iPhone, for example. You have an amazing display, you have great battery life, you have a great uh, processor. And just as importantly, it can connect to the internet over a wireless radio, right? Putting those technologies together, putting those ingredients together to make a great product, that can require a tremendous amount of um, hard problem solving. And when you look back on it and you go, hey, the way I put those ingredients together in order to make a really compelling product that was super unique, nobody else has done that. And the way I did that could be really innovative and the product can be a very innovative product. Yeah, I agree with that. I like how you mentioned putting ingredients together. It takes a lot of patience, a lot of precision, and I know your job does as well. I know you're an amazing innovator and um, obviously you've worked at these very impactful companies, but I wanna hear about more of your leadership. So can I ask you what your leadership style is? Do you have one? Yeah, it's a great question. I think every leader is different. They have to be authentic at the end of the day. You have to be true to who you are. And for me, because my background is technical in origin, I started out as an engineer, I like to really know why things are the way they are. So I lead with curiosity. And you can take curiosity about technical topics and be curious about people. And that can translate from not just the people in your organization, but also your investors, your customers. So it can go really wide. Uh, how does authenticity matter to you? Like, where does it fit in? What role does it have in your leadership style? The problems I really like are the ones that are really tough. And um, that means that for every, you know, four steps forward you take, you may take three steps back. Um, but you keep making progress and you eventually get there. You have to deal with reality. Physics doesn't care how you feel. And, um, and, and so if you lead re in a real authentic way where you really are telling the truth, then uh, it gives people the comfort to know that you really like to live in reality, even if it means that you're hearing, you know, some days good news and some days not as good news about technical progress or program progress or, or interpersonal progress between people, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I really love that actually. At Oceanside Perspective, we're really big on also not only our technical skills, our hard skills, but also our soft skills yeah. and the way that we deal with people. So I really love the way that you said that um, it, also your curiosity connects you with those different environments and those different roles that you had. Um, I'm curious though about your entrepreneurial mindset. Um, what does an entrepreneurial mindset mean to you? What does having one mean to you? Entrepreneurship for me, um, really starts with what is a problem that really needs solving? 
Um, what was great about the iPhone is that it literally democratized access to information. The entrepreneurial problems that I enjoy like going after are ones that use technology to solve human problems. When you think about um, like the work we're doing at Archer today, uh, cities are highly congested and it can be very, very difficult to just get from one side of LA to another side of LA, for example, and it's only a few miles or same thing with Silicon Valley, but it could be an hour, it could be more than an hour. And so finding a way to solve their transportation problems while, without making our cities more noisy and more polluted, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah, I like the question that you asked at the beginning. What is the biggest problem that needs to be solved? Do you have an answer for that at Archer? Well, I think what's going on at Archer is absolutely amazing. I wouldn't be here otherwise. And one of the things I think that's really cool about Archer is that there's deep, deep technical expertise around uh, the core technologies that are needed to make aircraft. Um, but at the same time, there's a tremendous amount of care on the humanistic side. If you look at, for example, Midnight, which is um, the Archer aircraft, it's very obvious that it has a design element to it. Um, it's beautiful. Products that can be both beautiful as well as functional, I think are um, amazing and they're frankly rare. And so it's one of the incredibly attractive things to me about Archer. Yeah, definitely. And the way that you described like safety and how it's, it's obviously heavily involved in experimentation, all sorts of experimentation. So I want to ask you that kind of safety question. Um, what can you, as now our OP board of directors, what is your role with us? How do you keep us safe as well? And how do you keep us aligned? Yeah, well, one of my roles with Oceanside is really to bring the technologist and the kind of entrepreneur innovation side um, uh, and kind of perspective into the Oceanside perspective. And so it's kind of one piece of a multi-piece puzzle. One of the questions I get all the time is, gosh, how do I trade off between speed of development and safety, for example, in applications uh, uh, that involve, you know, medical or transportation or any of these things that involve have a, a significant safety element. And I actually really enjoy telling them, you don't have to trade off speed and safety. Because when you're unsafe, terrible things can happen that actually make you much slower overall. And so actually, having the courage to make really safe choices doesn't mean that you have to ignore being innovative. It doesn't mean uh, that you have to go slowly, but you have to have some courage to do it. So it's that sort of a thing that I can bring, that kind of operator, technical, um, innovator background into uh, Oceanside. Yeah, I love that word courageous. And I actually want to ask you a question about um, innovation, more getting into that, because that's actually one of my favorite topics yeah. um, is innovation and its relevancy to the entrepreneur. Um, and organizations like OP, like nonprofits, or even like us, um, what do you think their role can be in this world? Like, what do you think their impact can be in helping foster practical innovation? Yeah, it's a great question. So if you think about um, companies like Archer or Apple um, or um, Google, the people inside those companies are directly working on the development of new, interesting, innovative, important products. And the question is, how do you maximize the capability of those people? And how do you give them the most insight? And how do you uh, enable them to be more than the sum of their parts? And so Oceanside is, is able to take our people and make them the very best leaders that they can be. And then that has that amplifying effect because if we can teach emotional intelligence, for example, uh, to leaders, then they are able to then uh, provide the maximum value to their organizations and to the people in their teams. And then that enables the people in their teams to do the best work of their lives. Do you think leaders are enablers? Leaders have to be enablers. Okay. Um, an individual can only do so much. And so that's actually one of the biggest lessons of leadership is that your value is in what you enable in a team and in an organization. What do you value? What is your, I know we talked about your leadership style. What's something that you would want to reflect onto your team? 
one of the core values to me is actually taking joy in the development and the accomplishments of your people, both as individuals and what they accomplish together is more than the sum of their parts. Oh, I love that. Can you give us an example of any time in your career where you felt like you had to experience disruption or in order to thrive from it, in order to learn from it? I think there have been many points in my career where I've had to adapt and overcome, which might be the best way to put it. Um, early on, I, I had a pretty rude shock when I came into Apple and discovered that uh, much of what I learned in school wasn't necessarily directly applicable to the development of products. Learning never stops. I will never know enough. There will always be somebody else on a given topic who is more expert than I am. As a matter of fact, quite the opposite, I needed to learn to go and seek out every expert I could in order to knock a, an impossible problem down to a hard problem and a hard problem down to an easy problem, easy problem down to a solved problem. And so um, that takes getting comfortable with not knowing everything. Why do you think it's important for you personally to um, invest in the next generation of entrepreneurs, into the next generation of innovators, leaders, and like in, um, entrepreneurs, technologists, innovators, leaders? Well, because you all are gonna define the future of our world. What better investment than in the, the generation of people who are going to take the world and, and make it that better place? Yeah. Um, I can think of actually no better investment uh, when you think about it, investing in humanity, like what, what better investment could you possibly imagine? And because Oceanside Perspective is a multi-generational educational platform, what advice would you give to the younger generation? Well, really two things. The first would be that um, never believe uh, that there are limits on what you can do. Because if you don't try, there definitely are limits. And if you do try, you might accomplish incredible things. Uh, the second is, is that individually, there's only so much any one of us can do. And so become excited about what you can do with others. The ability of a team to accomplish something is so much bigger than any one of us. And so the joy, the ability to derive joy from that is the ability to have huge impact. So Benjamin, you're now part of Oceanside Perspective's Board of Directors. Welcome, welcome. And I wanted to ask you, why do you want to be a part of our board and a, bar a part of our community? Well, I got to tell you, you know, we talked about already mission and people. And when you have a great mission and you have great people, first of all, you do great things, but you also have a ton of fun along the way. And I can tell you for a fact, that in Oceanside Perspective, there are some incredible people who I've gotten to interact with, um, including people on the team, as well as on the board. And uh, the mission, which at the end of the day is empowering the next generation of entrepreneurs and innovators in a human-centric way, like that's an incredible mission. All right, well, Benjamin, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a very big pleasure to welcome you aboard Oceanside Perspectives Board of Directors as well. I want everybody in our audience to also give Benjamin Lyon a very, very warm welcome. We're very happy to have him. Are there any closing thoughts you want to say to our community? Well, first of all, thanks for, thanks for having me and thanks for the lovely discussion. Definitely some really interesting questions and you know, I think I'm going to be thinking about them for a while. Maybe I should relate some of them to my kids. Um, Thank you very much for welcoming me, uh, me into the Oceanside Perspective community. And I'm looking forward to um, being as helpful and useful as I can be. Yeah, well, we're looking forward to working with you. All right, thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, if you like this video, please like it and subscribe, as well as share this video with your community as well. If you're Benjamin Lyons kids, please watch this video too. Learn something from your dad and consider donating to our cause so we can continue uplifting perspectives like Benjamin's and our younger generation as well. Thank you so much for joining us one more time and we'll see you next time, bye. All right, I have her ask the question. I'm not answering it again because that was no, the best no, no, answer no. I've given all day. <laughs> and. Yay.